Hey guys, and welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. As you can see, since the last suture video, this suture room has already changed. I told you stuff in the OR changes all the time. They recently repainted this entire suture room and they mounted all of our sutures on the walls and they actually got rid of a ton of suture that we just do not use often at all, if, if at all. Uh, so, this is a totally revamped suture room. And today, we are going to be talking about the suture sizes and that means like the gauge of the actual suture itself and the needles. We're gonna do a breakdown of the needles. So, suture sizes. This video could not have come at a better time. Them revamping this suture room, everything in here is super, super organized and everything is organized to size. So it'll be easy. So as far as sizes go, the bigger the whole number is, it, the bigger the suture is going to be. So between a one and a zero, number one is going to be a larger gauge suture. If there was a number two suture over here, the number two suture would be larger than this number one. From largest to smallest, it's gonna go one, O, two O, three O, four O, five O, six O, seven O, eight O, ten O, nine O. It, it goes all the way, I, I've seen as small as ten O, and that is like, I mean, that's like smaller than a thread of the hair on your head. You can like barely, barely see it. So, again, the whole numbers are going to be your larger gauge suture. A number one, a number two, number two, number one, O, two O, three O. That's how you're supposed, that's, that is how you gauge which suture is going to be bigger. Now, as far as needles go, if you remember from that previous, uh, previous suture video, I mentioned that there are taper needles and there are cutting needles. There are different types and different variants of taper and cutting needles, but for common purposes, there's a taper needle and there is a cutting needle. A cutting needle is going to be used for tough tissue. Uh, I mentioned it in that video, again, uh, it's subcuticular tissue when you're closing up skin that's that's a really tough tough tissue and majority of the time people will use like a 40 monocryl ps2 cutting needle to get through that subcuticular tissue as opposed to that we have the taper needle it's more of a soft tip it's it's like a softer tip to a needle uh, it still has a, a very fine point to the end of it but there's no blade coming down uh, to cut through the tissue. It's, it's basically just a smooth edge throughout the entire needle. And that's for softer tissue, maybe like a subcutaneous layer, uh, getting through uh, suturing up muscle, uh, organs, bowel, stuff like that. That's when you're going to be using a tapered needle. So I want to start with all of our tapered needles first. And I want to try and group our tapered, tapered needles together uh, in a way that is hopefully easy to understand. So starting off with the CT family of tapered needles here, from largest to smallest, we have the CTX needle. That's our biggest tapered needle for the CT family. And then it just gradually steps down from there as far as size goes to the CT, CT1, CT2, and I believe there is a CT3 as well but we got rid of it because nobody really used it. Now this is the BV family of needles. We'll start from biggest to smallest again. We have the BV, BV-1, BV-175-8, and BV-175-6. These are all very, very similar in size with very, very small differences in the size of the needle. But when it comes to vascular surgery, that type of size really does matter. These are kind of uh, some other random uh, tapered needles. We have a BB, which is very, very close to an SH. An SH needle is more of a half moon shape. Uh, BB isn't quite the half moon shape that the SH has. We have an RB1, five, uh, an RB2, 
and then the 60cc. The cc needle is interesting. This, this needle here is actually, it's a taper cut needle. Uh, so it does have a little bit of a cutting factor to it. Speaking of the SH needle, it's right here. We have the SH needle and its bigger brother, the MH needle. And also the UR5 needle and its smaller brother, the UR6 needle. Now this next set of needles are all going to be cutting needles. Uh, starting from the biggest, we have the PSL needle and it goes down to the PS, PS1, and then PS2, FS2, and then a P3. So I just want to clarify something here. All of these needles that I was talking about in the video, um, they can be used with any types of sutures, you know, the ethabons, the silks, the vicrols, the prolines. These are all, the, all of these needles are kind of interchangeable. Um, aside from the very, very small ones, uh, like, like the CC and the BB1s and stuff like that, usually, you know, those are strictly vascular type needles and you'll only see those on prolines. But I'm talking about the big CT1s, the CT, uh, the CTXs, uh, you know, you'll see those on PDSs and, and, you know, ethabons and silks and stuff like that. So these aren't specific just to, you know, the suture brands that I was showing you in the video. Now you'll notice that the FS2 and the PS2 are, I mean, they look almost exactly the same. They look exactly the same, but really the only difference is the actual shape of the needle itself. This is an exact triangle and this is a little bit different than, uh, than a triangle. The, the sides of the triangle actually kind of cut in a little bit. Now as far as most common sutures you'll see and most common needles you'll see used in the OR, I'm just going to show you the most common sutures used to close an incision. And that would be either a 2-0 Vicryl CT1 or an O-Vicryl CT1 depending on how deep the incision is or if the incision is a little smaller maybe a 3-0 uh, Vicryl SH both of these braided sutures as you remember from that previous uh, suture video another option would be the 0-UR6 if it is a trocar site those trocar sites are tiny so this little needle is able to get into that tiny little space, that little like 10 or 12 millimeter space, so they could get in there, get that fascial layer, so they get a proper closure of that abdomen. And then the most common suture that you're gonna see used in the OR, the 4-O monocryl PS2. It's used on skin all the time. Like 90% 90, 90 of the cases you're gonna see, you're gonna be using a 4-O monocryl PS2. That's that's just like the number one suture to use. Now you may ask yourself, why do some surgeons use this needle and other surgeons use a different needle? Or this surgeon uses this suture on skin and this surgeon uses this suture on skin. Honestly, what it really comes down to is the surgeon's training. I'm gonna tell you that straight up. And that's what they've told me, because I've asked them multiple times. I'm like, hey, you know, Dr. So-and-so uses this for skin. You guys both do the same procedure. What is your reasoning for using this? Or why do you use this suture for your mesh when this doctor uses his this suture for the mesh? It really comes down to how they were trained and the sutures that they used when they trained. They go through that training for, you know, four or five years plus a fellowship. They're used to using the, those types of sutures and those types of supplies. So when they come into the real world and they come into ROR's, that's what they want. That's what they're used to. And it's kind of interesting. They they're really they kind of have blinders on as far as like suture and supplies go. You know, sometimes reps will come in and you know, they may try and hunt down some, some surgeons to, to show them something new. A lot of the time surgeons really, really hate that because they just don't have time to listen to some spiel about why this new suture that's coming out is better, better than what they've been using for the past 10 years. And you know, what they've been using for the past 10 years works perfectly fine. But they really do listen to the input of us as techs. 
because we have the ability to work with multiple surgeons across multiple specialties. So we kind of have our eyes open, whereas they kind of have their eyes set on one thing. Uh, you know, it's so they, they actually listen to our suggestions. So when you're in the OR, don't be shy about, you know, possibly suggesting a different type of suture, something that might be easier for the surgeon to use in a certain case or, or some sort of instance. All right, guys, I hope that this, uh, this quick little needle uh, breakdown was good for you. Um, it really wasn't as many needles as I thought it was going to be. Now, I know there are other types of needles that I didn't really touch on, like the TF and the TP1s and stuff like that. I just, I wanted to focus on more, more of like the, the families, like the RB1, RB2, uh, CTX, CT1, CT2, you know, that, those types of things. It's, it's easier to realize, and those types of needles are more commonly used anyways. So I hope you guys like the video. Uh, thank you always for sharing and liking and commenting on the videos, and I will see you again. Bye.